Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have some marriage of convenience romances. <laughs> I love the marriage of convenience trope. I think it is just an amazing trope because I love romances where the couple has to get married. It adds so much angst and tension and just a whole nother level because they're married instead of just like dating, you know? So I love these books so much. Okay, first we're going to be getting into the like more contemporary romances and then we'll get into like Alien, a few alien, I think I have one, maybe a few, I don't remember. Um, and then there are a few historicals as well because that's quite a popular trope in historical romances as well. So first we're gonna go over the contemporary romances. First I have Marriage for One by Ella Mays. I am in love with this cover just by the way. <laughs> this is a stunning man. I was a little sad when they did some cover changes and it's now like an illustrated cover because this man is just stunning. And I think like in bookstores now, the illustrated edition is the one that's like being sold. But like, this man is beautiful. Why did you change it? <laughs> anyway, this is the romance between Jack and Rose. Yes, Jack and Rose, like Titanic Jack and Rose. I think there's even like a few jokes in the book about that. Rose in here is really wanting to open up like a coffee shop, I think that, or like cafe of some sort. Um, But there's a few stipulations in the what's it called? Like lease? Lease for the building she wants to rent to put her coffee shop in. And one of them is that she has to be married. Jack overhears her predicament and he offers her marriage basically. And she is a little bit like confused because Jack is one of the grumpiest people ever and he doesn't seem to really like her. So she's confused as to why he would propose this to her. Um, but she just says, well, okay, like I need this place you're offering yourself up on a silver platter basically. So, okay. The two of them have to figure out how to be married together when they don't necessarily get along 100% and they don't even know the other person 100%. And you're also trying to figure out throughout the book why Jack decided to marry Rose, like what was in it for him. Cause you don't really see that at first. So um, I really enjoy this one and it's full of grumpy sunshine and it's quite slow burn. Then I have Roomies by Christina Lauren. I think this was the first Christina Lauren book I ever read. When was this published? Ooh, let me check. This was in 2017. So it's one of the first like romance books, traditionally published romance books that I remember reading, which makes sense because I did start my booktube channel in 2017. So Holland is our heroine in here and she wor lives in New York City. She works in New York City and she takes the subway every day to work, but she doesn't take like the, like the fastest route ever. She kind of does a detour every day so she can watch this guitarist on like the subway, the side of the subway, is that what that's called? Anyway, like performs on the side of the subway every single day. And so she makes her route a little bit longer so she can watch him because she has the hugest crush on him and thinks he is super talented. Her uncle is, I believe a musician on Broadway. Like I think he's in part of like the orchestra and he's like a high up guy, a part of Broadway shows. And he's trying to find a specific person to fill this role that he's wanting to fill. And Holland comes up with this idea, like, I think I have the perfect guy for you. And so she brings him to Calvin one day on the subway. And like her uncle like falls in love with him, like needs him to be in his show. There is a main issue, however, in the fact that Calvin is in the United States illegally. I believe he's from Ireland and his student visa expired years ago. So he can't really be in a Broadway musical because of that, like he's not in the US legally. Um, so Holland decides to propose marriage to him so that he can be in the US legally. So the two of them have to figure out married life when they barely know each other. And she doesn't really disclose the fact that she has a little bit of a crush on him when they get married. Like Calvin just thinks that this girl's given him a solid, you know? <laughs> so um, there's just a lot going in here, but they are, they have to be roommates and like pretend to be in love so other people believe that like they're actually like married and in love because he could be sent back to Ireland if like the jig was up you know if you're getting into romance I really recommend this book um it's very much traditionally published so take with that what you will but this is one of the books that got me into the romance genre so I think it's a great read we're gonna tiptoe into a little bit of the uh, darker side this is a worthy opponent by katie roberts this is book three in the wicked villain series if you don't know what the wicked villain series is it's a retelling series if you will about villains getting with heroes 
in like fairy tale sense. Um, and it all takes place in this certain kind of club. There's some like fantast fantastical like paranormal elements just by the way. They're all normal people um, who happen to be like richer, whatever, own a club. <laughs> but there's no like magicalness in here. Like when you think Disney and fairy tales, you think magic, there's no magic in here. Um, so this is the romance between Tinkerbell and Hook. That's why I said no magic because it's not this little fairy falling in love with this man who has a hook for a hand. <laughs> so just letting you know. So this is basically Tink falling in love with Hook and vice versa. Tink works at this club that all of the books in the series take place in. It's the club that Hades owns. Plus she's in a little bit of a bind. There's a man looking for her. His name's Peter Pan and she's trying to escape him and uh, Hook like comes up with this proposition and is like, I can protect you if you marry me. And so very reluctantly she agrees and um she is very much into performing her wifely duties in a certain sense if you would catch my drift. Um this book is super fun, super fun and I love the dynamic between Tink and Hook like this couple is iconic. I think this might be my favorite book in the series. I'm not sure. Ask me a little later it might change <laughs> but I absolutely love these two couples and just their relationship and how they fell in love with each other and just their whole dynamic when it came to like married life. It was very entertaining. Then I have Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This is one of my favorite marriage of convenience romances. It is just so cute. This is the romance between Zenny and Mason. So Zenny's I believe great aunt just died and she was like fabulously wealthy and she lived in this small town where a lot of people ostracized her except for a few people one of which was Mason who was a young man in town who would like help her with certain things and just befriended her would just sit and chat with her and so when her great aunt dies she has a stipulation in the will that says like Zenny will not get her inheritance unless she marries Mason and he'll get some inheritance too if he marries Zenny. So uh, the two of them have to be married for a certain amount of time in order to get the inheritance. And so they say like, oh, what the heck? Why not? Like we'll be married for I think like a few years. I don't know. And then we'll have a bunch of money. <laughs> um, but obviously things change for them. They start falling in love with each other and both of them are super cute and super funny. Both of them are so funny. I cackled so many times reading this book but man it was also very steamy. <laughs> for an alien romance I have a When She's Ready by Ruby Dixon. This is the first book in the Rizdiverse series. Um, there's technically like a prequel before this I really recommend reading. Um, if you really want to get into this series as a whole, but this book can be read as a standalone. But if you're wanting to like read this whole series, I recommend also reading the prequel. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to mention, you can listen to this book for free on the Read Me Romance podcast. Like that's free to everyone. Um, so I definitely did that when I first read this one and it was very fun. So Tassar is our hero in here. He's a big blue alien and he just got released from... Oh, sorry, the dog's barking. Um, he just got released from a prison camp and he needs to get married for a certain reason. I think for uh, like safety, you know? Anyway, he then finds Leilani on this uh, farm planet, which will later, we will be known as Rizda 3, that that's where all these books in the series take place on. And Leilani needs to find a husband because she's so sick of these alien men that are her neighbors like pursuing her and not being the nicest. And so she's like, oh, if I have a husband, maybe they'll back off. And so the two of them get married for their own certain conveniences. This was just a fun, quick little novella. And if you want something to listen to for free, you can definitely pick this one up. We're going to be getting into the historicals now, one of the most iconic marriage of convenience romances, The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare. So Ashen here is a duke and he just, I believe got back from war. He was enlisted into the war and uh, he experienced quite a lot of trauma and pain from it. And he also comes back with a lot of scars on his face and his body. His fiance, who was engaged to before he left, takes one look at him and calls off their wedding because she's like, I can't stand to be married to someone who looks like you. Awful, right? Okay. She's not the heroine, don't worry. <laughs> so our heroine here is actually Emma, who is the dressmaker for the wedding. This dress has been completed for a, a little bit of time and she is getting very impatient. No one has come to pay her. She then decides to get in the wedding dress itself and march her way over to the Duke's estate and confront him and tell him to pay her. 
like, like she's like, there's no way he could turn me away. I'm wearing the wedding dress. Like he has to pay me. It doesn't matter if his fiance like called it off. I worked so hard on this dress. I need to get paid for it. So Ash is a little bit bewildered when this woman shows up in his office wearing a wedding dress, but that gives him an idea. What if he marries this woman instead? Because his main goal for getting married was to produce an heir. So he asks her to be his wife <laughs> just for the sole fact of getting an heir. And once that happens, once they've conceived like a baby, he will let her go do whatever she wants. So the convenience part in here is the fact that Ash needs to have an heir. So, um, but this grumpy, grumpy, grumpy man ends up falling for Emma and it is so swoony. I love them so much. It's a great start to an amazing series. Please pick this one up if you haven't yet. It's like a classic historical romance for like today's day and age. Next, I have a little bit of an underrated one. This is the Viking Chiefs Marriage Alliance by Lucy Morris. So yes, this is a Viking romance. You don't see those a lot, I feel like. So yeah, if you wanna read good Viking romances, Lucy Morris is the way to go. Our heroine in here was previously married to this very mean old man who was kind of like a king of Vikings of sorts. When her husband dies, she sees this as the perfect opportunity to run away from her people, from her village, because they have not been the greatest to her. But on her trek to another land, the longboat that she's in ends up capsizing. But she gets rescued along with the other people who are on the boat with her by our hero in here, Thor. He ends up taking them all back to his village where he is the um like viking chief obviously viking chief there is a guy who's like higher up than him like a king of sorts but in their land and he basically forces them to get married for certain reasons i don't want to disclose that because i don't want to spoil it but um this is such an entertaining viking romance like lucy morris did her research with this um and i feel like it's as authentic as it could be you know um because we didn't live during this time period but i really love both these characters you have like a prickly heroine who's very closed off and a hero who kind of misjudges her at first but once he gets to know her like she's the woman of his dreams then i have a notorious vow by joanna shoop this is another one of my favorite historicals i love it so much lady christina is from england and her and her parents end up traveling to america this does take place in america um because her parents like squandered all their wealth. And so they're like, we're gonna go to America where no one knows who we are. She can marry someone wealthy and then we can just take all the money. They have a plan for her to marry this very old, old man who is gross. And so Christina is obviously not, not excited about this. Um, and so while they're staying at her aunt's home in America, um, she loves to go to the neighbor's gardens and kind of decompress there and take walks over there. Um, but then she bumps in to the guy who owns the estate named Oliver, and he's not very happy that this woman is just walking on his property. Um, turns out Oliver is deaf and he is also like an inventor of sorts. He's trying to invent a hearing aid and they very reluctantly become friends. Like she comes over a lot to come chat with him, but then something happens where the two of them have to get married. And one of the reasons is because Oliver wants to save Christina so badly from her situation. Like she's not in a great situation. Even though Oliver is very grumpy, he has a huge soft spot for this woman. I adore this one and more people need to read it. I know it's like book four or three in a series, but you can totally read it as a standalone. I've only read this one. I haven't read any of those in the series. Next, I have Temptation of a Proper Governess by Kathy Maxwell. Let me just talk about this step back for a second. Like her step backs, like I could stare at them all day. They're beautiful. She has so many like two page step backs too. Like look, it has like the painting effect. I'm in love. So this is a romance between Isabel and Michael. Isabel becomes Michael's like governess. I think he has custody of his nephew or niece. I can't recall off the top of my head. It's been a while since I've read this. Um, but anyway, she's the governess in his household. And um, Michael is falsely accused of a crime and was like falsely convicted for a bit, but he just recently got released. So he's a little bit of a scandal to his name, if you will. Um, and he ends up, I think, putting Isabel in a compromising situation like in front of other people and she's ruined and so he's like oh I guess I gotta marry you then <laughs> even though he's very attracted to her like he doesn't see this as like a downfall even though he never expected to be married so Isabel's not 
very happy with him because he ruined her reputation. There's no other option. She has to marry him or she won't be married at all to anybody. It's full of angst and tension and just like banter. So I really recommend this one as well. And lastly, I have The Duke I Tempted by Scarlett Peckham. This is another situation where the hero ruins the heroine and they have to get married because she has like no other option. Um, so our heroine here is a botanist and she is hired to decorate the interior of a ball for um, this Duke's sister. She's putting on a ball in at the Duke's estate though. And uh, during the ball, I believe that the Duke just can't help himself, even though he has like past burdens and past trauma, like he's very attracted to this woman um, and things happen between the two of them. However, like she gets ruined in front of other people and there is no other option but to propose marriage. And he is not happy about it because he has a lot of past trauma with marriage and everything like that. So um, I'm gonna leave it there. I don't wanna spoil anything, um, but this book is hot, it's fun. It gets dark at times. So please just be aware of that. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 romances with the marriage of convenience trope. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, that's okay. You can leave me any wedding related emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.